So the next thing we'll, we'll be doing in the spanning tree is verification of the spanning tree. Now probably I'm going to connect some switches with the multiple redundant links. As I said, the spanning tree is going to work by default, but we, we are going to verify the spanning tree behavior by using some of the specific show commands like show spanning tree, or I can use show spanning tree with VLANs. As of now, we are just going with a VLAN one. And if you're working on the real switches, we can also use some command called spanning, show spanning tree root. So these are the specific show commands which we can use for verifying the spanning tree. So let's go to the diagram here. I have some diagram. I got some three different switches. We can have some more switches if you want as per our requirement. So and I'm, then I'm going to connect some switches, something like this. I'm going to connect on port number 20 on this side, port number 21 and then port number 22. So I'm going to provide some layer two connections and then once the connectivity is done via cross cable between them and spanning tree will start working automatically. So STB will start working automatically. All the ports will go through listening and learning stages as I discussed, which means these ports, what are the ports here? This will be in amber color before it actually turns to green. So there will be an amber color for the next 30 seconds because of the default spanning tree behavior. So on the real switches on, on or even you can verify here and before they actually after 30 seconds they transitions into forwarding state and we are going to verify this behavior by using a command called show spanning tree so we'll be using some a command called show spanning tree so let's let's go to the command line before i actually go to the command line let me provide some connections between the switches so i'm connecting port number 20 20 20 on the left side you can see the port labels over there and then port number 21 you can see they are in amber color and then port number 22 and then here 22 so not mandatory that you should use the same ports and if i give show spanning tree you can see they are still in amber color you can see there's a listening state in fact the other port is in a blocking state here and you can see the port goes to learning state if i go to switch to show spanning tree you can see both the ports are in learning state and after some time i should see these ports turns to green you can see port number 20 turns to green here and some other ports and after some time i should see this port also goes to forwarding that is green now this process as i said every port goes through listening and learning stages and all the ports are green except this port now the port which is in the blocking state will be displayed in amber color only now if you go and verify on the switch one, the top one is a switch one over there. If I give show spanning tree, you can see the port number 20 is an alternate port and it is in the blocking state. So we've got three different ports. Now, if, if you see this, this is a switch one and this is port number 20 and 21. And this port is in the blocking state because of the default spanning tree behavior. So let's try to understand how uh, the spanning tree worked in this scenario and who is the root bridge what are the root ports and what are the designated and non-designated ports and the conditions based on our selection now if you try to guess who is the root bridge in this scenario this is definitely not a root bridge because we have a blocking port and probably the root bridge will not have a blocking port so which means either switch 2 or switch 3 should be the root bridge so i'm going to assume that switch 3 is a root bridge because because if this is not if if I if I assume that this is a root bridge in that case there won't be a shortest path. Anyway, you can go and check verify on the switch two. Let's go to switch two and verify who is the root bridge. So let's go to switch two. If I give show spanning tree. Now in case of show spanning tree, now how to figure out a root bridge in case of big networks? Now it's very simple. Uh, whenever you are verifying let's try to understand some more information here there are two kinds of information you will see one is root id and the other one is bridge id now the bridge id is the information about my own local switch so whenever you say root id means it's information about the root bridge about the information of the root bridge right now these two informations are not same because you can see the priority value is three two seven six eight in fact, it is 32769 because the default priority value will be 32768 plus it will add the VLAN number. VLAN 1, which is default, 
So the priority value will be 32769 and that is what we call as extended priority value. Now if we try to compare the same thing with other switches, now both the switches have the default priority value of 32768 plus VLAN number and if you compare the MAC address of the local switch 0010 and 1161 and 0001 so which is better 0001 and 0010 so this is having the better bridge ID and definitely this is not the root bridge uh, because if this is a root bridge you will see some message as this bridge is a root I'll show you that but how to figure out in the production networks if you have a very big network so simply follow this port simply just follow this port now it says that you have a root bridge connecting on this particular port port number 22 so maybe it is a next switch or maybe this is the shortest part to reach the root bridge remember so we just need to follow this port port number 22 what's the other device connected on this port so most likely in my scenario switch 3 is a root bridge let's go to the switch 3 command line and verify the same thing so show a spanning tree and if I give show spanning tree you will see the message called this bridge is a root Whenever you see this message, you have to understand that that switch will be selected as a root bridge. And if you want, you can go and do each and every switch and compare the MAC address. And that's something we can use show version, the base Ethernet MAC address, or you can use show spanning tree. You will see the MAC address here as well. It's a base Ethernet MAC address. Now I can compare the all the three switches. If you just compare, you'll you'll finally come to know that this is a root bridge and and the selection process is based on the MAC address because there is a tie in the priority value. And after that, you can see the timers, the BPD messages and the maximum age is the uh, maximum dead time. It's going to wait and the forwarding delay is your listening and learning stages. Now, now apart from that, you can see the two different ports and both the ports are designated ports and there's no root port because this is a root bridge. Root bridge will not have any root ports. So the root bridge so all the ports will be in the forwarding and all the ports will be in designated ports and there are point to point links which is connecting to the these are the ports connecting to the switches so probably if you are connecting any any device to the computer probably you'll see them as edge ports edge ports means the ports which are connecting to the end devices now the next thing what i'll do is i'll try to shut down the link so Let's, let's go to the one of the link. Let, let's go to switch two and verify the root port. Now in this scenario, port number 22 is a root port because this is my root bridge. And then the cost from here is 19. If you go from this way, it will be 19 plus 19, 38. So obviously this port will be the shortest path to reach the root bridge and that will be the root port. Okay. So remember one more thing, every, uh, mostly every root port will be forwarding all the time but every forwarding port is not a root port remember that because you can have two forwarding ports here but both will not be a root ports okay so the next thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to verify the spanning tree convergence by shutting down one of the link i'll go to switch one and on the switch one i have two specific ports uh, port number 21 and 22 and i'm going to put I'm going to shut down the port, any one of this port. So let's say I'm going to shut down this port. And automatically as it is on the same switch, now this port, which is in the blocking state, has to go through listening and learning stages immediately. And the default convergence time has to be 30 seconds. That's what we are going to verify again by using show spanning tree. So I'm going to shut down the port. And if you verify the port number 20, which was in the blocking state, immediately transitions into listening and for 15 seconds it will be in the listening state i'm just retyping the same command again and again and after some time it will you will see the port goes through listening state and it will be automatically selected as a root port because this is the shortest path now there's only one shortest path this port will be considered as a root port and also this port goes into forwarding immediately because after 30 seconds because this link is down and if you verify, now the port turns to green. That's a default convergence time. Let us make the interface back to up. Interface F0 by 21. If I give no shutdown, 
and if I if I make the particular port back to up now this particular port before it goes into forwarding again it will come back to forwarding but before that it has to go through listening and learning stages as a default on every port and then this port again back to blocking state because the main link is up now you can see the port goes through listening and learning stages before it actually puts the port into forwarding state now you can see it is in the forwarding state now what if if the indirect link fails so i'm going to shut down the indirect link so let's say i'm going to shut down this link which is on different switch and i want to verify this blocking port should transition into forwarding after 50 50 seconds so because because it is expecting the bb messages from the root bridge and it is not getting that and it's going to wait for 20 seconds before it actually goes to listening and learning stages for the next 15 seconds listening 15 seconds learning so total overall it is going to take around 50 seconds the default convergence time so let's go to switch 2 on the switch 2 i'm going to shut down the port which is the indirect link so i'm going to shut down the port on the switch 2 and if i go and verify on the switch 1 the port it is still in the alternate for 20 seconds and then after some time you'll see this port as it is not receiving the ppd messages it will start going through listening state now you can see the port transitions into listening state because it is not expecting the ppd messages from switch 3 which is a root bridge it's not receiving from this port and then it goes through listening and learning stage after some time now you can see the port goes through learning stage and then before you actually see the port into forwarding state so let us give some time for convergence here now you can see the port has been put into forwarding state now if that particular port comes back let's give no shutdown command assuming that the interface comes back again now again what it is going to do is it is going to put this port back into blocking because it is not the desired path because this is a desired path and this port will be considered as a root port and the shortest part of the root bridge and then this port turns to forwarding but after going through with listening and learning stages so every interface before it comes into forwarding or blocking it has to go through with listening and learning stages for 30 seconds uh, that is a default spanning tree convergence or the default spanning tree process which happens on each and every port even if you are connecting any computer on the hand host so if i just connect any computer on f0 by 1 even f0 by 1 port also goes through with listening and learning stages that's a default uh, default thing what happens on the switches listening and learning uh, spanning tree process now if you want to verify some more in detail i i strongly suggest you to have some build some topologies like this one which i have given here you can you can connect some some topologies like this and to verify the default root port selections we can have some device connected here and then and then you can you can verify which uh, based on the first condition if there's a tie in the cost you can build some topology if there's a tie in the cost what it is going to see by building some of the topologies like this it's going to see the forwarding device mac address because we are not going to change any priority value by default and then if there's a tie in the bridge id that is bridge id in that case it is going to see the port number and that too it is not going to see the local port number it will see the upstream port number when it decides the root port okay so and then after that if after that finally it is going to put the remaining ports into forwarding or blocking state in those kind of cases it is going to see the local bridge id in fact it will see the cost again and the second thing it will see the local bridge id information and then the third condition it will see the local port number so that's how a spanning tree is going to work it's always the best way you know you can you can just have some a kind of simulation where you can connect some multiple devices and you can verify the same so in fact i suggest you to also verify by adding some ethernet links here so let's take an example if you have some ethernet link here and then the cost is 1919 so if this is a root bridge and the cost here is 4 plus 4 ethernet link in that case this will be the cost to reco from here will be will be how much 19 and the cost from here it will be 8 
so which means this will port will be considered as a root port rather than using this port so when i say shortest it doesn't mean based on the number of links it all depends upon the speed the cost so probably you can also add some ethernet links on the gig ports and you can verify the spanning tree uh, behavior how it's going to select by using specific show commands like show spanning tree and and you can you can clearly verify how it's going to work